Today we're going to be looking at the Sleek, a larger size model from Thula that's convertible for use with either one or two children. This is Thula's first and only foray so far into producing a model of this sort, meaning a four-wheeled reversible seat stroller priced high enough that is forced to compete as a luxury model, and despite having been rather successful with their off-roading and jogging strollers for years, this is actually no small shift, as the transition brings with it the need for an entirely different emphasis in relation to which characteristics are most important. And in this video then, we're going to check out whether they succeeded, whether this stroller is actually worth its price tag as a high-end tandem model in comparison to the wider market. But before we begin though, I do want to make one tiny comment on the name itself, and that's that if you search around online, you'll see virtually all the reviewers out there not just calling the model The Sleek, but describing it as Sleek, which in my mind is just about the most blatant example of marketing psychology that I've ever seen. And to be honest, without that name, Sleek is probably not the word I would choose myself if comparing this model side by side with most of its competitors. Thula does this across their line too, I've noticed. So before we get going then, please clear your mind and note that just because they call a model the Glide doesn't mean that it glides. Just because they call it the Spring doesn't make it springy, and just because they call it the Sleek definitely doesn't make it sleek. They can't well sell it as the Chunky, now can they? Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started then, kicking off with some stats. The Sleek clocks in at 22 kilos and folds down to 83 by 61 by 42 centimeters. It can take up to 22 kilos in the seat and 5 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. Starting off with child comfort, while the width of the sleek seat is decent lengthwise, the leg rest is a bit shorter than average, meaning that it will likely begin to feel cramped at around two and a half or three years old, and even though there is a lower foot rest on the front frame as well, the distance from the seat is conversely quite long, making it unsuitable for taking over leg support until at least six months or so after your child has outgrown the main seat. Design-wise, the Sleek uses a rigid frame with an adjustable leg rest, though note here that the leg rest does not have much of an arc upwards, and thus can't achieve an upright position with flat leg support, as can often be comfortable for younger toddlers. As far as the textiles are concerned, I find the Sleek definitely on the cheaper side, despite feeling a bit wear-resistant, both in terms of fabric quality, but also when it comes to the little extras one gets with virtually all other strollers in this price class, meaning things like the fact that the side and shoulder straps of the five-point harness must all be connected independently of each other, that the method for changing the height of the shoulder straps is not built to slide up and down, either on straps, as most manufacturers do it, or on the backboard, as newer Boogaboo models do. That the textiles do not have removable base and backboards, which would have allowed for washing them in a machine. And finally, if I'm picking on details, that the bassinet storm cover only attaches via a single pair of push buttons, having no zippers or velcro to better hold it in place. Minimalism can often be nice in stroller design, but not when it comes to these sorts of details. As a last note on the seat, as far as sun coverage is concerned, the Sleek has both a sun flap and an extra extendable portion zipped into the canopy. And while neither is all that large on their own, together they do make for decent shading. Moving on to parent comfort and ease of use, the Sleek has a decent handle height with a range between 94 and 109 centimeters, and a shopping basket that, while not overly large, isn't small either, and has both a nifty magnetic button for opening and extending it backwards, as well as a zippable roof, for those people who like a closed basket. When it comes to folding, the process is easy enough, as soon as you get used to that unique inverse angle at which the arm locks engage, and when folded down, as a single piece with one forward-facing seat attached, the Sleek is self-standing, though do note that it's a bit of a larger and heavier model overall, and can be a bit cumbersome to lift and pack away. As far as the various activation mechanisms on the model go, to be honest, I'm not really that tremendously pleased with the majority of them, as both the folding triggers and the canopy mounted release trigger on the bassinet seem a bit shoddy in construction, exposed springs like this being a definite no-no in my opinion. The ballpoint swivel lock buttons hang a bit right out of the box, the lack of a crossbar beneath the seat to link up the seat struts makes them a little fiddly to find the right attaching position simultaneously, and the seat adjustment flap feels stiff, failing to provide an intuitive or definitive feeling in the fingertips when activated. On the other hand, looking past these peripheral elements, the main construction of the chassis is well fitted and rigid, which creates a sense of durability and when combined with an emphasis on internal simplicity, keeps the model free from asymmetrical fiddliness. As far as driving is concerned, the Sleek feels pretty unsuspended, despite its rather hefty looking rear frame suspension. And the reason for this, as far as I can figure it, is that Thule seems to have just brought over the same suspension setup more or less that they used on their three-wheelers, while going for an entirely different wheel type, and failing to recognize that urban conditions are quite different from off-road jogging. So while that very stiff, very vertical suspension works great with 14-inch air-filled tires rocketing over uneven terrain, going over lighter terrain with the Sleek's harder rubberized foam wheels just doesn't create enough force to usually even compress the springs, meaning that it often feels as though you didn't have any suspension at all. 
As a result, the Sleek will be capable of driving wheel size wise over a lot of different types of terrain, but it's unfortunately likely to jump and jitter like crazy as it does so. And as a last note on this, be aware that as a front loaded tandem model, both tipping and steering will be a lot heavier when using that second seat, which will reduce both the model's maneuverability and terrain capability from how it feels in mono mode. Okay, let's move on to the mechanics of the Sleek then, starting off with the handle, the folding system, and just the general structure of the chassis. And as far as the handle is concerned, the model uses a typical telescopic height extension setup with a pair of separate triggers for activating the fold. In general, the handle, as with most elements on the model, is well fitted and doesn't feel loose, though note if you're looking at getting this model used that there was a product recall in 2020 resulting from a problem whereby the handle sometimes detached from the stroller while driving. When it comes to the central folding mechanism, there's an admirable emphasis both on keeping the system simple and composed of predominantly metal components, a pair of rotating discs that lock together with a pin. And though the mechanism is both quite thin and flat, it's protected from horizontal pressures by strong crossbars with reinforced connection points. One note here to be aware of is that Thule's metal bars feel a bit different to the bars on most other strollers, being generally thinner and lighter weight and relying on a clever use of angles for their sturdiness. A fact that I've always thought of as coming from their long history of producing car carriers and ski racks and the like before ever getting into strollers. And while this design choice doesn't make their models weaker in regular use, I have had many of their models come into the shop as a result of pretty serious bending accidents, such as forcing the back door of your car down onto a stroller that hasn't been positioned correctly, for example. And the nature of the damage leads me to believe that this sort of metal is thus a bit more susceptible to damage from unusual situations like this. Moving on down to the rear frame, I've already expressed that the suspension, while decently sized, is the wrong sort of setup tension-wise for the model in my opinion, and feels stiff as a result. As far as the brake system is concerned, the Sleek has quite clearly opted to just take over a good baby international design that can be found on, among other places, virtually all of Cybex's models, rather than designing something uniquely their own, and as such, is due to receive the same praise and criticisms that I've leveled towards the setup many times before, being that using a rotation-based system as opposed to a wire-based system is good for its simplicity, but that plastic locking pins are bad, both in terms of potential for wear as well as for braking, and on this model, note that there's a substantial gap between the rear frame and the wheels themselves which only increases the amount of pressure put on those pins, as well as on the axles of the rear wheels by the way, which since they contain the locking mechanisms for the wheels, also have the possibility of bending due to weight over time and ceasing to function. As far as the tires are concerned, Thule has opted to go with a very thick wear resistant rubber foam, which is good for holding up in the long run, in fact I see the axles and ball bearings giving out long before the tires, but which is also a bit on the heavy side, and as I indicated before, doesn't really contribute anything in the way of extra suspension to the model. Looking lastly at the front frame, the size of the Sleek's front wheels are just on the plus side of average for models of its type, at 8.7 inches, and the model has a standard form of suspension built into the forks just above the wheels. When it comes to the swivel locks, the Sleek uses a ballpoint system with the buttons located on the top of the front frame. This sort of a setup tends to suffer over time from getting hung up if not lubricated properly, and on this stroller, one side was already a bit fiddly right out of the box. As far as the connection between the front forks and the frontal housings is concerned, a crucial area for preventing wobbling problems down the road, the Sleek absolutely shines, with a variety of mechanisms and design choices made to protect the wheels from loosening, including a raised ridge on the underside of the housings, axles that sit flush within ball bearings, and internal components adding horizontal pressure to the axles themselves. One note here though, is that since the correct connection is so tight, if you get this model, this is an area that will be important to keep lubricated, in order to prevent the axles from rusting within the mechanisms. So, should you get the Sleek then? While there are a number of positive elements with the model, in particular related to design minimalism and the construction of a relatively sturdy structure while using lighter than average metal components, in my opinion, the Sleek is grossly overpriced for what you get versus the offerings of comparable, large-sized, tandem-capable models on the larger market. My guess with this model is that its popularity owes quite a lot to the success of Thula's other legitimately good sports-oriented strollers, but when it comes to shifting that success over to a different set of needs, I feel they've bumbled a bit with this one, failing to meet pre-established standards for luxury and ease of use as set by their competitors, and also mechanically by not sufficiently considering how a different sort of use should have impacted overall design. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.